In the last two lessons, you've seen that the most common materials used in negative and positive electrodes in lithium ion battery cells are graphite in the negative electrode and some other common materials in the positive electrode. In this lesson, you will learn about the electrolytes and the separators for these cells. And we start by looking at the electrolyte. You might remember that the electrolyte is the media that conducts ions between the electrodes internal to this cell, and that in a general electrochemical cell, the electrolyte consists of a solvent into which we dissolve either a salt or an acid or a base. Some battery cells use an electrolyte whose solvent is water, and we call those aqueous cells. But if you look at the electrochemical series, you will notice that water disassociates into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas at a potential of around 2 volts. So any battery cell having voltage higher than 2 volts cannot use water as its solvent. The slight exception to this is the lead acid battery cell that has voltage that's often a little bit over 2 volts per cell. And the reason that this is possible is that when sulfuric acid is dissolved in the water, that slightly changes the voltage at which water breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. It slightly elevates that voltage and makes a 2 volt battery cell possible. But it's not possible to get it much above 2 volts. And so an aqueous solution in a lead acid battery cell actually works, but an aqueous solution would not work for a lithium ion battery cell because these typically have overall voltages much higher than 2 volts and usually higher than 3 volts as well. So instead, the lithium ion battery cells are made using electrolytes that are non-aqueous and they are built using organic solvents plus a lithium-based salt that dissolves into that solvent. The electrolyte in a lithium ion battery cell acts purely as an ion conductor. It does not take part of the normal chemical reactions for charging and discharging the battery cell. The table on the slide shows some of the most common solvents that are used in electrolytes in lithium ion battery cells. These include ethylene carbonate, propylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate, ethyl methyl carbonate, and diethyl carbonate. The table also shows the common abbreviations that you will see in the literature. Ethylene carbonate is abbreviated EC, propylene carbonate is PC, dimethyl carbonate is DMC, ethyl methyl carbonate is EMC, and finally diethyl carbonate is abbreviated DEC. Each of these solvents has slightly different properties. Some of them become essentially solid at temperatures below around 0 degrees Celsius. So these solvents are not appropriate for battery cells that must operate at low temperatures. Others cause the cell to degrade more or less rapidly. Even though the solvent does not participate in the normal reaction of charging and discharging a battery cell, it can participate in undesired side reactions that slowly cause the cell to deteriorate over time. And so to get the most desirable properties in a design so that it works well at, warm, at cold temperatures and warm temperatures and that it doesn't degrade quickly, often these solvents are mixed together in the electrolyte in different ratios. And it's beyond the scope of this specialization to look at the reasons behind all these different properties. But I would like to share out a common feature to all of these. If you look at the chemical bond structure of each of the solvents that's drawn in the table, you will notice that they are different in many ways, but similar in one way. At the top of each one of these molecules, there is an oxygen that is double bonded with a carbon atom. This double bond causes the oxygen atom to develop a slight negative charge and the other parts of the molecule to develop a slight positive charge. So the overall molecule is slightly polarized. And it's this polarization that allows these solvents to dissolve salts. So when we add a salt, which if you remember is an ionic compound that has one uh, component from the that's positively charged and one component that's negatively charged, this 
uh, salt will easily break down into a cation and an anion inside of the solvent and will make a good electrolyte for the lithium ion battery cell. The most commonly used salt in a lithium ion uh, battery cell is lithium hexafluorophosphate, which I find quite difficult to say. And in this specialization, I will not need to refer to the salt very frequently, but when I do, I will probably simply call it LIPF6 uh, instead. There are some other candidate salts that are used, and these include lithium tetrafluoroborate and lithium percolate. Uh, these are uh, used for, for some reasons, but they're certainly not as common as LIPF6. Uh, as we talked about on the previous slides, the solvent does not participate in the normal chemical reactions in the lithium ion battery cell, but different solvents have different properties with respect to aging and low temperature performance and so forth, and in the same way different salts have different properties with respect to aging and so forth. Uh, but they don't usually have much impact on how a battery management system conducts its day-to-day uh, -day life. And so we don't have much opportunity to discuss the design choice of building a salt. So because the solvent does not participate in the chemical reaction, um, but the salt does, um, because the salt is a charge carrier through the solvent, it's common to refer to the electrolyte simply by naming its salt and by kind of omitting what the solvent is, even though the electrolyte we know includes the solvent and the salt. So we might refer to an LIPF6 electrolyte, and it's simply understood that there's also a solvent mixed in that we're not mentioning. Lithium ion battery cells must also have a separator. The separator is a permeable membrane that has tiny holes in it, and these holes are large enough that ions can pass through them, but they're also small enough that the positive and negative electrode can't touch each other. If they were to touch each other, uh, you would have a short circuit, which would lead to heat buildup and thermal runaway, possibly a fire or an explosion. For this reason, the separator also must uh, be an electronic insulator. We can't allow electrons to flow across the separator, but we want ions to flow very easily through the pores in the separator. The image on the left shows a separator material that's used in some lithium ion battery cells. And to the unaided eye, it looks just like a thin sheet of uh, white plastic and you can even see my fingers uh, through the material. It's that thin. But if you look at it under magnification, as I show in the center image on this slide, it's possible to see these tiny pores between the fibers of the material. The pores are large enough for the ions to go through, but they're small enough that the electrode materials cannot contact each other. And that's really illustrated in the photograph on the right side of the slide, which shows a scanning electron microscope picture of a single particle of lithium manganese oxide material on top of a, a separator to give you an idea of the relative scale. And you can see that the pores in the separated material are much, much, much smaller than a particle size, so that the particles on either side of the separator will not contact each other, but that the ions can still flow through the pore openings. Lithium ion battery cells, of course, also have current collectors, and these are made from metal foils onto which the electrode materials are deposited. The purpose of the current collector is to conduct electrons from the electrode materials to the uh, tabs of the, of the the terminals of the cell to the outside circuit. And these foils are subjected to very harsh environments inside the cells. The lithium ions and the electrolyte and also the fluorine based ions and the electrolyte tend to be very reactive chemically and they want to undergo chemical reactions with just about everything. So we choose current collector materials very carefully so that they will not be degraded by the interior chemical environment of the battery cell. In every lithium ion battery cell of which I'm aware, the positive electrode uh, current collector is aluminum foil. And this is chosen, if you remember back when we looked at the electrochemical series, uh, because 
uh, aluminum tends not to react to anything as long as its potential is about 3 volts or higher. And the positive electrode active materials, of course, are chosen to have higher potentials. And in the normal operating region of the lithium ion battery cell, then they, they will not react with this aluminum and cause any damage to it. In the negative electrode, the current collector is almost always a copper foil. And that's again chosen because if you go back to the electrochemical series, you will see that any potentials lower than about 2 volts, uh, the, the copper is stable electrochemically and will not uh, react. The image on the right side of this slide shows a simple roll of aluminum foil that you might use in your kitchen for food products. And the foils that we're talking about for lithium ion battery cells are actually very, very similar to these. So the positive electrode current collector is made out of a similar aluminum foil. The primary difference between the battery cell current collector and what you would have in your kitchen is thickness. The battery cell aluminum foil is usually on the order of 20 microns in thickness, which is quite a bit thinner than what you would use in your kitchen. So to summarize this lesson, you are reminded that the electrolyte in a lithium ion battery cell comprises both a solvent and a salt. The solvent is usually made out of some combination of ethylene carbonate, propylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate, ethyl methyl carbonate, and diethyl carbonate. The salt is usually lithium hexafluorophosphate, or LIPF6, but there are some other options that are occasionally used, and these include lithium tetrafluoroborate or lithium percolate. The most common salt, LIPF6, disassociates into a lithium cation in the solvent and a PF6 anion as well. Uh, the PF6 anion turns out to be inert towards strong reducing agents such as lithium metal, and that makes it very attractive inside the cell because it will not react with them. You might remember in the previous lesson I mentioned that trace amounts of water in the electrolyte can lead to forming hydrofluoric acid, or HF. This comes from the water, or H2O, dissociating into hydrogen and oxygen and the PF6 disassociating into PF5 2 minus and F minus. And the hydrogen from the water and the F minus from the PF6 combine to make hydrofluoric acid or HF. And this hydrofluoric acid will slowly dissolve the inside of the battery cell. And in particular, some of the positive electrode active materials are very sensitive to it. So for this reason, it's very important to fill the battery cell with electrolyte in a dry environment where as much moisture has been removed from the air as practically possible so that we have very little of this um, moisture in the electrolyte and therefore very little of this hydrofluoric acid. You have learned that the separator in a lithium ion battery cell is a non-conductive porous membrane that simply separates mechanically and physically both electrodes to prevent short circuits. But we've also seen that it must have small pores or holes in it that allows the electrolyte to permeate through the separator and allows the cations and the anions in the electrolyte to move back and forth so that the normal operation of the battery cell can happen. And finally, you've learned that the current collectors are made from very thin copper and aluminum foils.